<sighs> Another day in Britain. <sighs> Good morning, world. You bastard. <laughs> oh, I wonder what's on. Uh, wonder what's on the internet this morning. Right, let's have a look. What should we have a look at first this morning on this lovely Sunday? Oh, I know we could have a look at some nice, big, juicy. Oh, no, no, better wait until Deborah's gone over that. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, let's have a look at Atari Age. Yeah, so what's going on there? Oh, oh, EVG cartridge. Always interested to read about that. Oh, and Temp's written something. Hmm. <laughs> right, let's have a look. <laughs> Bastard! Right, hello everybody and welcome to part two of my little series on uh, side three and what you can do with it. You'll remember if you watched part one that I explained standalone operation uh, with no ultimate one megabyte. And in this video I'm going to uh, cover a few more details that were perhaps missed in the first video. And then I'm going to go into uh, operation with the ultimate one megabyte. Uh, as was the case with side two. Um, side 3 sort of upscales in functionality if it's paired with uh, an ultimate one megabyte machine. Uh, you just have to uh, flash a plugin uh, and a PBI BIOS uh, to add side 3 support and you can do all sorts of wonderful things. So uh, yeah, so let's go over to the desk and uh, have a look. Well the desk's actually just over there. I don't really have to travel very far but it sort of adds to a, a, sense, of a, a sense of a journey in the video I suppose if I'm going over here. So let's go over here and uh, have a look. All right, so let's say you've got Ultimate One Megabyte in your machine and you've uh, applied the firmware update that I published on the Atari Age forum a while back. The only reason I'm hanging back from releasing it on my website properly um, is because uh, it wasn't actually finished at the time. So the only parts of your Ultimate One Megabyte firmware that actually need to change to support side three are the plugin here and the PBI BIOS. The loader isn't used at all and the intention was that the base BIOS code wouldn't change at all. Unfortunately, uh, since I had to remove the little Z driver um, from the um, PBI BIOS, I also had to remove the Z driver menu item from the main BIOS and move it to the plug-in. Uh, but now that that's done anyway, going forward, once you're at, I think it's version 3.12, there is no uh, need to change the underlying BIOS. You can just skip between side two and side three just by changing the plugin and the PBI BIOS, and that's all you need to. So were it not for that little change that I had to make to the base BIOS, um, all I'd have to release is a plugin and the PBI BIOS, and you'd be ready to go. But unfortunately there needed to be a, a change to the main BIOS. I was hoping to release the uh, firmware update because there's other stuff that got fixed in the next version of the Ultimate One Megabyte firmware. I was hoping to release that first and then release the plugins for side 3. But of course there was a big um, rush to get everything done because it was assumed that everybody was standing outside with pitchforks. I'm sure they were very keen to receive it, but I don't think the, uh, there was quite as much agitation among the customers as was assumed. Uh, but anyway, it's done now, so uh, my whole versioning cycle and everything went down the shitter completely. But never mind, never mind. So with this new firmware, if we hop into the Ultimate One Megabyte menu as it is, the Z driver used to be there. It's not here with uh, the side three, so we can see we've got this particular machine has Pokemax in it. Thanks to Retronics for that, by the by. Kind enough to supply a Pokemax so I could develop a plugin for it, and this is it. So with the plugin uh, for Side 3 and Pokemax combined, what a tremendous headache it is to maintain all these plugins, by the way. <laughs> but at least they exist, and it's possible to do this now, which it wasn't before. 
so this plugin anyway supports those two pieces of equipment. So anyway, this is the firmware or e version thereof. There's obviously a, a side three plugin uh, which just targets stereo pokey, and if you haven't got stereo pokey, don't worry about it because it'll be ignored anyway. Um, we've got the usual high speed SIO drivers. Nothing has changed here, it's all exactly the same. We've got our swap button now. When you enable the swap button here, that's this button here, just the way it was before. You use that to rotate your disk images when you are running a multi disk set. So if you've already used side 2 and ultimate 1 megabyte, you're going to take like this to a Dr. Water, believe me, because why not? Why not just have the exact same user interface that everybody's already used to? Isn't that a good idea? So now if I press L here, this runs the loader that we were using before right on the cartridge. Now, if you go over to the options here, there's a couple of things have changed. ATR support is now greyed out and enabled because you've got the ultimate one megabyte here with the PBI hard disk enabled. So your ATR support is there uh, whether you want it or not. Uh, now we've got our hard disk partitions, of course, because we've got the PBI BIOS. Now, since we've got the PBI BIOS now with uh, ultimate one megabyte, there's a whole host of new things we can do here. So let's go back uh, to those OSS cartridges that we looked at before. Uh, let's try basic X. So we'll mount that, control and return, just so we don't want to reboot yet. And let's uh, oh, let's grab a let's grab a DOS Spart, I think it is. There we go. Right, Sparta 32G, let's mount that, let's not unmount the cartridge, there we go. So now we've got the cartridge mounted and Sparta 32, let's press reset. There we go, there we go. we've booted Sparta DOS uh, to 3.2G from the ATR and we've got basic XE running as a cartridge right there, no problem at all. What other multi-cartridge allows you to do this? Run disk images and hard disk partitions at the same time as mounted cartridges. Tell me which other uh, multi-cartridge can provide that all in one device and I'll wait. So uh, let's try something involving um, SpartaDOS X. Uh, for those who like to do programming and such like, so let's go back in here again. Let's try Mac 65. So we'll load that with control and return. So there we've got Mac 65 mounted as a cartridge type 3. And we should, we've got Sparta DOS X enabled in the ultimate menu. So if we press control and X, it should boot Sparta DOS. So this is Sparta DOS on the ultimate 1 megabyte. And we type car, we're in Mac 65, and of course we have access to hard disk partitions and um, uh, disk images if we have them mounted. We'll go to DOS, there we go, and we've got our hard disk there, no problem at all. So this is something I want to actually automate. Say you want to use Mac 65 all the time and you don't want the hassle of having to go into the loader and mount it. I want to add an option so that will allow you to auto mount the cartridge so when you turn the computer on uh, the cartridge will silently uh, mount the specified ROM and then when you land at the Sparta DOS X prompt assuming you use that and type car it'll run Mac 65 until you want to change it to something else so these are some of the interesting ideas that you're going to see uh, bear fruit in the future uh, as we go on so uh, yeah so you get hard disk disk images, cartridges, all at the same time, all at once. Now when you want to actually uh, initialize a, uh, a card from scratch, the procedure is exactly the same as it used to be with side 2. So we're going to boot with Sparta DOS X enabled here. You don't have to use Sparta DOS X, but I'm just going to use it for the sake of argument because it's already on the car device, the partition editor that is. So there's no APT partitions on this card yet, so let's make some. So there's our card, it's going to tell us we require initialization. Yes, proceed. Master boot record will be destroyed. Okay, so we've got a 4 gig card. Let's just make the, the fat 2 gigs. There we go, that looks fine. Fat 32, fat 16 doesn't make any particular difference. Just check what we've got. Save, yes, write to disk, yes. And then we can start to add partitions for the Atari. Uh, we'll make that drive C. We'll just have one at the moment. Set the boot flag on there with B. 
and we'll write that with Control W. Yes, are you sure? Yes, updated successfully. Now I can pop this card out, put it in the PC, format the fat partition. So what we should have here, which we have, is a fat partition, FAT32, called New Volume, and there's our untitled APT, which we can open up as well, with one 32 megabyte DOS partition, which you saw me make in um, FDisk, and we can go and fill that FAT32 partition up with cartridge ROMs and car files and ATRs and XEXs and whatever you want to do. Something else I wanted to show you is the uh, hot swap facility. We can take cards out while the loader is running and pop another card in in its place. Like so. And there we go. Access to our other card. No problem at all. So that covers basic operation and hopefully you can see how powerful the thing is because for the aforementioned reason that from this loader you can mount a cartridge you can handle your APT hard disk partitions and mount disk images all in this loader and use them all at the same time, copying data from partitions to ATRs, from ATRs to partitions, and using mounted cartridges at the same time um, without any problems whatsoever. Uh, no need to jump between different modes of operation or anything like that. Uh, in particular, when you've got Ultimate 1 megabyte, you have access to the whole kit and caboodle uh, all at once, uh, which I think is really good. So the the issue, the prior issue we had with side 2 whereby the hard disk was blocking the cartridge port uh, is no longer an issue because you've got access to the vast majority of uh, cartridge types just by putting images of them on the SD card. Um, so there's no real reason to use the cartridge port for anything else, hopefully. It's easy enough to add new cartridge types as new uh, types are invented. The only kinds of cartridges that you can't really emulate uh, with side 3 are other multi-cartridges. So you can't, for example, emulate uh, the cart or AVG. But what's the point? Because they just basically do the same job uh, as this cartridge does. So yeah, I would say it's a very complete solution. And it's very, very crucially important that you do understand that you can use everything together, cartridges, hard disk and disk images, all at the same time. So this is just like having uh, an external hard drive and a, an application cartridge plugged into the top of the machine. And I think when we get this um, order run feature uh, working as well, uh, that will improve things even further. So yeah, I hope that gives you a brief overview. I've tried to keep it as short as I could, just into as to what this can actually do for you. Um, uh, very powerful on its own. Limited ATR support without Ultimate 1 megabyte, full cartridge support, and you've got your uh, hard disk uh, which you can use with SpartaDOS X. It should be possible, it may not work at the moment, but we'll look into that. Uh, it should be possible standalone to use the uh, built in SpartaDOS X with mounted cartridges, so you could have your hard disk and your cartridges. And then when you've got Ultimate 1 megabyte and you flash the Side 3 um, compatible firmware, the plug in and the PBI BIOS. You've got all this wonderland of stuff all right here and there's, there's no real reason why you need to uh, resort to anything else because you've got everything, all those storage options, uh, your cartridges, your hard disk and your disk images are all right in here. So uh, yes, so hopefully that gives you a, a rough idea uh, of what's possible and of course you have your, your disk uh, um, swap button of course as normal, uh, we'll just quickly show you that just to prove that it works. <laughs> so we look for the old Packerman Terrace and start that off. Press enter, loading part one. It's asking for side two, press the button, hit enter, and there we go. It's loading part two. So I hope you found that little introduction to Side 3 useful. As I say, you can expect additional documentation and lots of firmware updates going forward with uh, some exciting new features, uh, including that uh, auto-run cartridge feature that I've talked about elsewhere. And hopefully that gives you some idea of uh, what you can do and why I really like this hardware a lot and why it really coalesces all the things that I've wanted to see 
bundled together in one device for well five years or so really since I, since I wrote this uh, alternative firmware for ultimate one megabyte inside uh, the cartridge emulation thing was the thing that I really wanted to see and since we knew uh, side 3 was coming along although it was a few years ago now when it was announced um, I was pretty much focused on that and uh, now it's actually finally here and uh, I think uh, it does things in a really good way it's uh, it's fairly intuitive uh, there aren't many if any uh, multi cartridges where you can actually uh, mount a cartridge and then go back into the menu uh, and then come out of it again with the uh, mounted cartridge image still there and still intact uh, performance, uh, I.O. performance is more or less identical. It depends on the SD card a little bit. Um, so you lose nothing, you've got, you've, you've got more uh, flash ROM space, you've got SRAM, uh, you've got all the features that you're used to, all the EPT things, the partitions, the fat hosted disk images, which I think is the best way to do it, it's the most convenient uh, way to do it, uh, and we've added to that uh, the standalone limited uh, standalone disk image uh, capability um, that's never very compatible but at least it's it's there it makes an appearance anyway for those who don't have ultimate one megabyte yes I, so I think it, it can only improve going forward and I think bearing in mind some of the limitations some of the logistical problems that have been faced during development uh, the fairly limited uh, testing that was uh, done I think it's actually turned out very, very well indeed, and um, it's a fantastic piece of hardware. I mean, you know yourself, the software side of it is never done, and uh, you can own a piece of hardware for three, four years, and then somebody like me comes along, writes new firmware for it, and the whole game changes completely. Um, and that's what's called added value, um, and hopefully uh, we can bring added value to owners of this device on an indefinite basis going forward. I see no reason why not because there's so much potential there, so much power, and you can even do in place uh, FPGA updates with this uh, cartridge without cables and USB equipment. So uh, please support Lotharic um, by purchasing Side 3, uh, and in doing so, you also support me and Candle. So thank you very, very much for watching indeed, and uh, I do hope you enjoy side three if you did buy one and uh all being well i will see you in the next video so goodbye for now